Hi guys, and welcome to the latest episode of Flickering Dreams with me, Scott Forbes, and my colleague, Emma Sewell. And today we're going to be speaking to you about Immaculate, which is the new horror film that is hitting our cinema screens, starring Sydney Sweeney as a American nun that has moved across to Italy and joined a convent. And wouldn't you know it, there is some spooky things going on within this walls. <laughs> Here's a clip. I know God saved me for a reason, but I guess I'm still searching for what that reason is. Too much blood of Christ. It's a miracle. You are with child. So for me with this one, I didn't have huge expectations. I looked at the trailer and thought this is going to be another run-of-the-mill horror film that probably won't be scary, but might be mildly creepy. But I was pleasantly surprised, actually. I really got into this quite early and partly through the music and just the general atmosphere of the location and the performances, I was drawn in um, and I was very keen to know where this was going to go. And boy, does this go to some weird places. <laughs> I thought, as you can tell from the title, so obviously no spoilers, our main character, she's a nun, but she becomes pregnant without apparently having any sex. So that is a mystery that the church are trying to solve. And she doesn't know either why this has happened to her. Now, when she's first went in, she's not particularly treated the best by some of the people, some of the other nuns in there. <laughs> but as soon as she's pregnant and considered like the new Mary, oh, it changes. And she is suddenly faced with some people loving her and some people being very jealous indeed. <laughs> the scares, I thought this film was quite effective. It throws in a few jump scares. And although I didn't jump, I thought that they were definitely effective in the, what they were trying to achieve. I think a general audience aren't so used to sort of the horror genre will probably jump at some of them. And the characters, Sydney Sweeney, she has done a lot of movies recently, some of which we've seen, some have been sort of buried on streaming services. But, oh, wow, this is, could you say career performance so far? Possibly, at least in movies. Uh, a bit better in TV, but yes, it all comes down to, we can't talk about the end, obviously, but... It's just so memorable, that end scene. <clears throat> I was reminded in some ways of Pearl and how the film leaves you. And I won't say more than that. But the one thing that I was a bit sort of confused with was the nuns with the red faces. So I found that their presence was clearly creepy. And they did their job in terms of setting up the weird sort of paranormal religious experiences. But I wasn't fully sure of exactly how they worked. And I don't know. I, I felt like they either should have had more to do or we should have just kept them in the dark and just had even more of a mystery about what's happening with our lead character. And I felt like it was somewhere in the middle where I don't know if I loved the use of them. We have got the men in this film just being suspicious as hell. And are they good? Are they bad? You'll see for yourself. But I have to admit, on the whole, for a film that I didn't expect huge amounts from, I was pleasantly surprised. What did you think, Emma? Um, Ooh. well, I agree, I agree with you on some points. I, I was very much enjoying it. I thought, you know, the whole, the, the story in general made sense. I liked 
the way they took it, you know, there were rivalries and as we saw in that, you know, some quite, the, the clip, there was quite horrific moments. However, I feel like I would have enjoyed this a lot more had it been a thriller and not a horror. Because in the trailer, I had watched it, uh, I've seen it a couple of times, and obviously, like, they allude to the jump scares and things, and I was prepared for that. Now, I don't particularly like jump scares. I think it's just cheap ways to scare you. And to be quite honest, my heart can't take it. I've got to that point <laughs> where I just like to sit back and enjoy films. But I was, like, you could absolutely tell where the, when they were coming. And so I was looking at, like, looking away from the screen because I knew what it was going to do. And I was like, I don't enjoy watching that i don't think it really adds anything particularly good especially when this didn't really feel like what i apart from the outcome of the film it didn't really feel like it was a horror up until then just like a really heavy thriller was the vibe i was getting from it and i think i found that aspect of it a little bit disappointing and to be honest we got to the end and I was just laughing my ass off. I can't even lie. I was sitting there laughing hysterically because it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, you you got all the way up to this point and, yes, you kind of knew what was going to happen. You could see it coming. But the reality of what they made it, I don't think was in keeping with the tone of the rest of the film at all. It's interesting. I did not I get just, a laugh. Just, at the end. I was, I was genuinely sitting there laughing a lot. Um, <laughs> that's okay. That says a lot about you. I've got to admit, Emma. I, there's, <laughs> I don't know who else is going to be laughing at that scene. I mean, I, no, I, I can't really say anything because it'll just just spoil yeah. us, isn't it? So, um, but I just, it was just ridiculous and. <laughs> I've, I genuinely feel like if you'd have just left it off, it would have ended perfectly well. Like I keep hearing the name um, Sydney Sweeney, but I just genuinely, my friend had to tell me, oh yeah, she was in Madame Web, and I was like, oh, what? <laughs> genuinely, wouldn't have been able to tell you any other film she was in. Um, Any one you, Andy's favourite? Ah, uh, well, still haven't seen it. As I say, I think for me, potentially just a slight divergence into thriller would have been better but it was very watchable <laughs> so through the magic of editing we've also got a clip from andy grovery who's giving his opinion on this film as well so two miracles <laughs> have happened firstly we have a decent horror film i've been complaining for some time that horror films have not been scary they've not been creepy they've not even made me squirm this one the good news is did this one actually had me jumping out of my seat more than once, and it actually had me looking away from the screen more than once as well, but sort of squirming in my seat. Uh, the other miracle that happened is that this is a decent Sydney Sweeney film. Now, I've been very sniffy uh, about Sydney Sweeney films in recent months. Scott, <laughs> stop smiling. Sydney Sweeney's <laughs> films, Anyone But You, and a few other films she's been in have just not impressed me at all. However, in this, I thought she was terrific. She plays a nun who arrives in Italy to join a convent, unaware that through a combination of science and religious superstitions, the authorities, the powers that be in the convent, have plans for her. I think Immaculate is best summed up as Rosemary's Baby meets the Omen. Rosemary's Baby is a particular favourite of mine in the horror genre, as is the Omen. And, of course, we've got a, another Omen film coming out later this year. But this is absolutely superb. It's very creepy. It's very, it, it is scary. It has a satisfying ending. And overall, I gave Immaculate 8 out of 10. And so pleased to report that I actually enjoyed a Sydney Sweeney film. How about that? As I say, miracles will never cease. <laughs> wow, really called you out there. That was... <laughs> How did he do that? I oh. don't... Okay. Divine cool. intervention. Clearly. <laughs> yeah, he makes a good point, actually, there with the Rosemary's Baby comment uh, mm. next to the omen. 
Um, I didn't mention it when I spoke a little earlier, but I was getting a bit of Benedetta as well, um, film from a couple of years ago. Uh, I That's an interesting <laughs> score of 8 out of 10. I'm <laughs> guessing you're going to be a little bit lower than that, Emma. Uh, so not a, not a 6 from me on this one. Well, thankfully, the maths are going to be okay because I'm giving this one a 7. <laughs> Nice. which is going <laughs> to make the Flickering Dreams score of 7.0, which makes it a marginal hit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this latest episode. If you like some more, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, show everyone that you know, tell us, shout about us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you so much for listening or watching Flickering Dreams. You can find the video version on YouTube and the audio version on all major podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get each of the weekly episodes as they are released. We'll see you at the movies.